And we welcome you to Philadelphia. Cool, crisp afternoon as the Phillies and the Reds get set to go out of game one of this National League Division Series. Roy Halladay is the best pitcher that I've ever seen. But there had to have been some nerves going on. There had to have been uh, some excitement. Tonight, Charlie Manuel hands the ball to a playoff rookie as right-hander Roy Halladay, after 320 regular season starts, finally gets to make an appearance in the postseason. It is so loud in here, you can't even hear your heartbeat. Doc was just Doc. The lights didn't get brighter or anything. His mindset, I think, was still the same. It's one of those things where you know what's at stake, but I'm just gonna go out there and go do what I need to do. Roy Halladay has completed his warm-up tosses. Brandon Phillips stepping into the batter's box. We are just about ready to go. When I saw the first few pitches, I remember thinking, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you, you gotta get going now. Like, this guy is really sharp today. Otto swings and hits a one-hopper out the second. Utley flags it down, fires to first. It's a one, two, three start for Roy Halladay to his postseason career. I can tell you after that first inning, I was like, these boys are in trouble. They don't have a chance today. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Roy Halladay gets rolling, pulled the string on it. Everything was in the strike zone, and the sinker, the quarter, everything was working. So when he had that, it was no chance. Man, oh man, Roy Halliday locked and loaded here early. I just remember thinking, wow, he's got a really good sinker. As he backdoors Scott Rowland, the comeback sinker. I remember seeing his cutter and thinking, wow, he's got a really good cutter. And then he threw his splitter, and I remember thinking, oh, he's got a really good splitter too. And then I threw his curveball and I remember thinking, oh, he's got the best curveball I've ever seen. You know, it just was like one after the other after the other. He's had perfect control of all his pitches tonight against the best hitting team in the National League and he has dazzled them. To have those four pitches was not, was not fun for opposing hitters. Swing and a miss, he got him with another breaking ball. Boy, Halliday is just drawing a buffet of pitches today. You see the way the ball's moving. You see Chooch's glove here, and it drops down maybe an inch. Chooch's gloves here, maybe it moves over an inch, and it's like he is dotting. From my vantage, you can see it all happening. You can see his body language. You can see Chooch. You can see the ball ducking and diving. And lastly, you can see the hitters taking off their helmets, and they're just eyes big like, whew, that's filthy, and it never stops. You know, Jay Bruce walked against him, and Jay always brings it up to me. He's like, would have been a perfect game, but I thank God I was there, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> so. And how about this? Roy Halladay through six has not allowed a hit. Here's Joey Votto, a couple of ground outs in the ball game tonight. What I was thinking before that at bat, I need to like throw him off in such a way that maybe he gets rattled and hits me. So I get in the box and as Roy gets on the mound, I call timeout. Halladay was ready to whine and the time was called to the plate. I take a pitch or two, and I say, I'm going to call timeout again. Now time called again as Halliday begins his windup. I ended up making it out that at bat. And next year at the All-Star game, he said, hey, remember when you called timeout twice during that at bat? I wanted to kill you. <laughs> if I could have, I would have walked to home plate and choked you to death. <laughs> Two out, seventh inning. Got him. Roy Halladay, seven no-hit innings. And you better believe it is October time here in Philadelphia. Once you got around, I think it was the seventh inning, I kind of had a feeling it could happen once we got through the meat of the order that last time. Then I was like, all right, he's got a legit shot to do this. Fans standing, waving the white towels. A spectacular scene. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Strike three, called over the outside corner. Got him looking, another one, two, three inning for Roy Halladay. No hits allowed through eight innings tonight here in game one. It's like a quick glance at each other and like You know that's <laughs> And history on the line here in Philadelphia. All zeros. Eight no-hit innings for Halliday in his first postseason start. In the air, Chase Ugly. Nothing is routine at this point. Ugly makes a catch. One gone. Two outs away from a no-hitter in game one of the division series. He's not been a doctor tonight. He's been a surgeon. Oh, 
over is Valdez with room. Two outs. Can't even begin to tell you how loud it is here, folks. The Reds' last hope, Brandon Phillips. And one more piece to the puzzle for Roy Halladay. Just about a quarter to eight, October the 6th, 2010, the first postseason game for Roy Halladay. He winds the 0-2, swing and a dribbler out in front of the plate. I feel like it hit Brandon Phillips' bat a couple different times. My first thought is there's no way we're getting them out. There's no way we're getting them out. The ball's going to hit the bat, and it's, you know, what, something's going to happen screwy. I, I was I was panicking a little bit in that play because it was like, no hitter. If I don't make this play, you know, it's over. Ruiz out to get it. The throw from his knees. It's in time, and it's a no hitter. Unbelievable. Ruiz and Halliday embrace, and the Phillies celebrate around Roy Halliday. Really? Like your first game in the postseason and you throw a no-no. But at the same time, it's like, you're almost like you're not surprised. It's the second no-hitter in Major League postseason history. There's no question about it. That was the best performance I've ever seen. The ace of aces, Roy Halladay, a postseason no-hitter. He throws a no-hitter. It's like, that's cool, but we have a series to win. And when we got into the clubhouse, he made that very clear. He didn't really want the attention. He was putting praise on everyone else. You know, I think if you can keep that focus, you know, off of yourself, on the team, trying to help, um, it makes your job a lot easier. He deflected the attention away from himself uh, to his teammates, which you don't see very often. And it gives me kind of goosebumps thinking about it. When you saw him pitch or you saw highlights or you competed against him, you felt like you were playing against a Hall of Famer just a matter of time. 